so much. Thank you for joining with us tonight on this Sunday evening broadcast. We appreciate you uh, being a part of this service and being a part of this broadcast. I want to just start off tonight uh, with a couple announcements. And um, before we do that, we want to start off with prayer and ask God to help us. I know it's been a very, very hectic week for most people and um, going through some uncharted territories. But we're praying for you and praying that God will help you as you go through these times, okay? And boy, wasn't God good to us this morning in the morning service. He really was, and so we appreciate what He's done for us and what He's going to continue to do for us. Um, I want to just uh, start off with prayer, and then we'll uh, have the ladies to come up and sing a song, and then we'll give you just a couple announcements. So, Father, we come in Jesus' name. I ask you right now that you'll help us uh, in this service, do what needs to be done in every heart and life. I want to thank you, Lord, for still being in control no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the problems are. Lord, I just ask you right now that you'll help us, uh, God, in the days ahead, just to continue to follow you, continue to be sensitive to your will. We thank you for what you're doing, for what you will do, in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for the ladies as they come to sing. upon this mountain the sun is shining bright my heart is filled with gladness here above the cares of life but i've just come through the valley of trouble fear and pain it was there i came to know my god enough to stand and sing even in the valley God is good even in the valley he is faithful and true he carries his children through like he said he would even in the valley God is good this road of life has led you to a valley of defeat you wonder if the father has heard your desperate plea there is hope in that rugged place where tears of sorrow dwell and you hear him gently whispering i am here and all is well even in the valley God is good, even in the valley, He is faithful and true, He carries His children through, like He said He would, even in the valley, God is good, even in the valley, God is Like he said he would, even in the valley, God is good. Even in the valley, God is good. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate that. Good song. Great song. I want to give you just a couple of things and we'll get uh, back into the message here. Um, as I put a phone tree message out this week, letting you know how you can give uh, by online, online giving, I just want to kind of reiterate that. One thing that the, my secretary wanted me to inform uh, you about is you can bring your tithes and offerings uh, to the office Monday through Friday up to this point, uh, 8 to 5. And um, if you, if you uh, want to give online, um, well, let me say this bit first. If you bring it by the office, make sure that you're not sick. Uh, we don't want to uh, put anybody in any kind of danger. So if you're not sick, you can bring that by. Uh, otherwise, if you just stick that in the mail, we appreciate that. If you want to do online giving, uh, we've already got this up and running. And if you go to your, your phone, you can text. Just do a simple text. Uh, text the number 77977. 
And then in the message part, put Winkler's Grove and send your text, and then it will prompt you uh, to a website where you can click on that, and that's called PushPay. And it's a very, very secure site. Uh, thousands and thousands of churches are using this, and uh, it will walk you through as far as if you want to give online. And you can even set it up to where you can have it taken out even on a weekly basis for your tithes and offerings if you want to do that. Once again, that's 77977. You text that Winkler's Grove uh, in the messaging department, and then uh, it will return a, a, a website there that you can click on, and it'll walk you through that. Okay, so hopefully that'll be a big help to you. And um, we appreciate all of you folks that uh, have, uh, have been calling and been in encouragement, but others too have been calling and asking how you can get your tithes and offerings to uh, the church, and we appreciate that. Well, let me <clears throat> go ahead and tell you this also. Uh, remind you that all of the activities that have been previously scheduled for Winkler's Grove Baptist Church have been canceled until further notice, and we are uh, having our services uh, sent out live Facebook and YouTube. So uh, let me give you the, the updates so far. I think we are about 1,600 uh, 1. 1.6 thousand uh, as of Wednesday night on Facebook, and I don't know how many on YouTube, several hundred on YouTube. So a couple thousand people have viewed and been watching our services, and we're so grateful and we're appreciative of that. Be sure to get the word out to as many people as possible and uh, invite as many co-workers and friends and family members, relatives uh, to be a part of this, okay? And uh, allow God to help as many people as possible through this. Well, we're looking forward to seeing what God's going to do in the service tonight. So you pray. The ladies are going to come back and sing again. And you pray for them as they sing this song, okay? Lord, sometimes I feel the weight of it trial so I count the cost and trust you as your child I saw your crown of thorns how you gladly wore it every cross I bear I'm stronger for it make me blind that I might see from my knees. 
Thank you, ladies. Appreciate that so much. Thank you so much again for tuning in with us tonight. I want you to turn in your Bibles, if you would, over to the book of Luke. We're going to be looking at some scripture here tonight that I think will be an encouragement to you, and I hope it will be a help to you. The book of Luke, chapter 22. Luke, chapter 22. I'll give you just a second there to find that. Luke 22. And um, I want to start off with about verse 44. Luke 22 and verse 44. And uh, we'll read several scriptures here in this text. Well, I appreciate that good song. And I said uh, last week that uh, Wednesday night, I said that through all these things that we're going through, if we'll allow God to help us, we'll be stronger for it and we'll be stronger through it. And I hope that's what you're doing uh, these days. Okay, Luke chapter 22, verse 54. And um, the Bible is an account here. That it gives the account of when Jesus was in the garden. And the Bible says in verse 44, and, and being in agony, and in agony he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. And when he, when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow, and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude... And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, bestrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him. He said, Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves. When, he says, When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Now, look at verse 54. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And I want to just take that one text right there, that one verse, and preach this message to you. Je following Jesus at a distance. Following Jesus at a distance. Because Peter, the Bible says Peter followed afar off. Now, this is a great text uh, that is clear, that's a clear example of most saved people today. In fact... Most saved people today or professing Christians today are not following Jesus closely, but they're following Jesus at a distance. In fact, today they would be very comfortable in the ministry of Jesus since we are practicing social distancing today. It would just fall right into line with what they were, they're already practicing. So it's a, it's a great example of most people today and their attempt to serve God. They seem to want the title of a Christian, yet they are quick to disassociate themselves with Christ. Uh, the, the, and, and the minute that adversity or problems began to come up in their lives. Peter had just sworn allegiance to Jesus just a few verses before this. In fact, Peter made a big issue of how he was going to stand with Jesus, even if it meant death. And here we see he's confronted with the possibility of death, He's confronted with the possibility of being arrested, and yet he, in this minute, in this hour, uh, decided that he wasn't ready for that, that he began to flee. The Bible says he followed afar off, or followed at a distance. Now, 
Matthew chapter 26, verse 31 says, Then Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, This night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Watch this. In verse 35, Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the other disciples. Now, so Peter, he was very boastful. He was, uh, he was bragging on the fact that he was going to stand by the side of Jesus. And he was bragging about the fact that if, if anybody else left him, he would never leave him. And then we see here immediately, shortly after the statement was made, that Peter is following Jesus afar off. How many times have you done that in your own personal life? Maybe you've gone to an old-fashioned altar and you've dedicated yourself to Jesus Christ and you said, I'm going to go with Him. But just, as, just the minute that you're confronted with a little bit of circumstances that are, are changing or conditional situations at hand, you begin to find yourself following Jesus at a distance. Maybe you just haven't spoken up like you should. Maybe you've just not responded the way you should to, with the boldness that you need and you find yourself following at a distance. I want to look at a couple things with Peter tonight. I want you to notice, first of all, Peter's concern. He wanted to stay clear of the consequences that came along with following Jesus. He wanted to stay clear of the consequences, consequences in that day such as being arrested. In fact, he knew that when they came with swords and he knew that when they came in the night there that they were all going to be arrested. He, saw, he certainly thought that. And so Peter wanted to stay clear of the consequences of maybe being arrested or maybe just being embarrassed by being associated with Jesus and being entangled and maybe even being ridiculed. And that's where we find a lot of people today. Maybe in our, even in our school systems and maybe where you work. Maybe the, situation, uh, has, maybe the situation has found you to where you've been confronted with an issue in your own personal life. And instead of standing firm with Jesus, you found yourself following afar off as Peter found his self here also. So he wanted to stay clear of the consequences. And let me just say this, there are consequences to following Jesus. Uh, he, there are consequences, but he wanted to stay clear of those consequences. He tried to play both teams. Peter, said he wanted, he wanted to be for Jesus when Jesus was there and everything was good. But listen, when everything went south and everything started going bad, all of a sudden, he didn't want to be associated with him. Now, Jesus said it like this, you're either for me or against me. And today we find a lot of folks today that are in our churches that claim to be Christians, that when they get confronted with the circumstances and the conditions at hand, the conditions change, it gets a little bit stormy. A lot of times these same people who once said, I'm going with Jesus all the way, who once said, I'm never going to uh, uh, apart from Him, who once said, it don't matter what happens, I'm going to follow Jesus even until death. Now they're walking at a distance, following at a distance uh, as Jesus uh, as, as in front. Jesus said, you're either for me or against me. That simply means there's no straddling the fence. That simply means there's no gray area. It's either black or white. And he said, you're either for me or against me. So Peter was trying to play both teams and he was trying to stay clear of the consequences, but also Peter was persuaded by the circumstances at hand that it was over and it was time to go back to his old life. Peter was a commercial fisherman. And uh, Peter had already decided that it's over. It's over. Nothing that, was, nothing that had been told them all this time was coming to pass. Peter had it in his mind that they were all going to rule and reign with Jesus. And he had it in his mind that everything was going to be great. Now all of a sudden Jesus has been arrested. He's been taken to the high priest's house. In fact, the Bible teaches uh, that it even come to a point to where they, they, he pulled a sword and cut the, the, the servant of the high priest's ear off. Listen to me. Listen to me tonight. Peter brought weapons. He brought a sword preparing to fight for Jesus. But when it came down to it, he began to flee and he fled the scene. Listen to me. Peter was persuaded by the circumstances that it was over. Let me ask you tonight. What circumstances in your life have convinced you that it's over? What circumstances in your life have convinced you that you don't need to follow Jesus as closely. 
I want to say to you tonight that we need to follow Jesus. We need to be right with Him no matter what the circumstances are. No matter what the conditions are. No matter if they change between now and 24 hours from now. No matter if the circumstances look dim. No matter if the conditional situations have changed to where it's not in our favor. We need to make sure that we're willing to follow Him every step of the way. Why, preacher? Because He's never led us astray and He's never forsaken us. We ought to be willing, we ought to be willing to go with him no matter what the circumstances are. It's amazing to me, Peter was persuaded by the circumstances at hand. It's amazing to me that people today, when things are going great, when things are going smooth, when the waters are calm, people will follow Jesus and they'll, just be, they'll be glad to be considered a Christian. But friend, the minute that things kind of go wrong, the minute that things kind of go south, the minute that the circumstances change, the minute that the conditions change, we find people following Jesus at a distance. Peter was the same way. He was persuaded by the circumstances. He was convinced that it was over. In fact, he said this. He said, I go a fishing. In other words, what he was saying is, I'm going back to my old lifestyle. I'm going back to the nets. I'm going back to the fishing industry. I'm going back to what I had security in before. And I want to remind everybody that's listening by the live feed tonight, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, I want to remind you tonight that the old life's not worth going back to. There's no security in the old life. There's security in following Jesus tonight. Amen. That's where our security is. And we just need to stick with Him. Sometimes, <coughs> sometimes the circumstances of life are convincing to us. And we must choose to hold on to the words of Jesus. So we looked at Peter's concern. I briefly want to look at Peter's conduct. Peter's conduct. The conduct that he had. Verse 51, the Bible says Peter uh, was coming to fight. In verse number 51, the Bible says here, read with me here. Back in verse number 51, it says, And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him, where Peter had cut the man's ear off. He, was, he wanted to fight till death, yet he wasn't willing to live for, for Jesus. This is a strange situation. Peter, Brother Perry, Peter brought a sword to a prayer meeting, expecting to fight, and yet he wasn't willing to live for Jesus. And I want to say to you tonight, listen, hey, listen, uh, we don't come to the house of God, to, we don't meet together at prayer meetings to fight. Say amen right there. Amen. We meet together to pray, to get a hold of God, and we, we, we meet to, to get in touch with God. And he was willing to fight till death at one point, but, but he wasn't willing to live for him. And Peter, Peter wanted his own will instead of God's will. Jesus already said he came to die. He had already taught these men, I didn't come to live, but I've come to die. I, he was, in fact, Jesus was born to die. And we know that story there. But Peter didn't want that. Peter didn't want God's will. He wanted his own will. In fact, you, you, if you back up a couple stories from here, you'll find out that Peter and some of those men were walking by Jesus, with Jesus one day down the road, and they began to get in a skirmish among themselves and say, who's going to be the greatest in your kingdom? And they were wanting to see who was going to rule over the other. And, and so Peter, he wasn't really concerned that much about God's will as much as he was concerned about his, his, his own will. Peter was boastful and loud. Let me just say this tonight. Usually those who are the loudest to boast of attachment to the Savior will be the first ones to detach themselves from the Savior in adversity. When adversities come and situations change and circumstances of life change and the conditions change, those who have boasted the loudest about being attached to Him, will be the first to detach from Him when life begins to go wrong. And I want to say to you tonight, it don't matter once again, it don't matter the circumstances or the conditions in life, we need to stay attached to Jesus. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. We need to stay attached to Him. We don't need to become attached to this world. We don't need to detach from Him. We need to stay attached to Him and detach from this world. So Peter's conduct. But I want you to look at Peter's consolation. Jesus was praying for him. In John chapter 17, we read that over in John chapter 17 where Jesus was praying for his disciples. And then we read in John chapter 17 where Jesus wasn't just praying for his disciples, but he was praying for us also. 
uh, when he was praying for his disciples. And I want to remind you tonight, church, Jesus is praying for you also. He didn't just pray for his disciples in John 17, but he's pray, he prayed for you, and he's praying for you today. Jesus knows what you're going through. He knows what you're facing, and he understands your makeup. He understands who you are. He knows who you are, and he knows what you're made of. He understands all that. In Mark chapter 16, verse number 17, or verse number 7 tells us that. When he said, go, and he said, and tell, and Peter. He said, tell my men that I've resurrected, and Peter. He wanted Peter to understand that he didn't hold anything against him. Of course, this is after the death and the burial and the resurrection. He wanted Peter to understand that every day is a new day with God. Did you hear me? Every day is a new day with God. Amen. I'm so thankful that Jesus is willing to start over with us every day. He's willing to wipe the slate clean. He's willing to erase all the bad. He's willing to erase all of those downfalls. He's willing to erase all of those mistakes, all of those sins. He's willing to start over every day with us if we're wanting to go with him. Peter's consolation was the fact that Jesus was praying for him. Jesus knows what you're facing. He knows what you're going through. And he's been praying for you. But I want to, I want to look at Peter's credit because many times we don't give him credit. Uh, you know, I've told you all these things about him, but let's look at the, let's give him a little bit of credit tonight. Peter was the only one in the story where the, the, the storm had come up and, and, and Jesus appeared out on the water and Jesus bid them to come out. And Peter was the only one that got out of the boat. He was the only one that stepped out onto the water with Jesus over in Matthew chapter 14, verse 29. The Bible says, Jesus said, come out here with, and Peter stepped out on those waters and began to walk with Jesus. So we got to give him some credit. He had faith enough to do that. I've never done that. I've never, I've never been physically able to get out and walk on water with him, but Peter did. And so we got to give him some credit. But also Peter, when you, you got to give him a little bit of credit when he was in the garden. He drew his sword. To my knowledge, he's the only one that drew his sword to defend Jesus when the others ran away. And uh, so we got to give him some credit where credit's due. And uh, I want to notice in conclusion Peter's comeback. But Peter, Peter had a comeback. And as I said a while ago that Jesus is willing to wipe the slate clean, and as I said a while ago that Jesus is willing to start over every day with you, and as I said last Wednesday night that God majors in taking mess-ups and making masterpieces out of them, I want you to know that He can make a masterpiece out of you. He can make a masterpiece out of anybody that's willing to follow Him. Peter became a rock of faith for Jesus afterwards. In fact, Jesus... Uh, mentioned this in one of the scriptures, but he became a rock. He became a a solid foundation for for Jesus and for him. He could depend on him. Peter died for the Lord on a cross. History tells us that he died upside down and crucified on a cross. He had a comeback. He was stronger than ever, as that song said. Stronger for it. So he became stronger for it. He became stronger through it because he didn't allow his downfalls to, break, to, to hold him down. He didn't allow his downfalls to defeat him and, and, and cause him to live a life of shame. He didn't allow his downfalls to bring him down to where he could never be used of God. But he became stronger through it and stronger for it and allowed Jesus to, to make him greater in a greater testimony in this life. Peter also preached on the day of Pentecost, and the Bible says over 3,000 were saved. Isn't that amazing? Over 3,000 were saved. You talk about a comeback. Peter had a comeback. I want to say to you tonight out there, wherever you're at in your living room, kitchen, den, wherever you may be, you may be piled up on the sofa tonight watching this program. I want you to know tonight it don't matter where you found yourself. It don't matter maybe how you've fallen. It don't matter how you maybe made a mess of things. Maybe you say to yourself, well, Jesus don't really want to have anything to, me, to do with me anymore. I want you to know, friend, he's willing to wipe that slate clean. Amen. I want you to know he knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows all about you, and he's willing to start over. You can have a greater comeback than ever before because Jesus is willing to start over. Let me ask you a question tonight before we conclude. Are you following at a distance? Are you socially distancing yourself from Jesus because of maybe some circumstances or conditions. I was just talking to somebody just a few minutes ago before our service started, and, and this person told me they were in a grocery store and began to talk to somebody that they didn't even know in a grocery store, and 
within just a few minutes they were talking about how good God is and how good God is and how great He is. Somebody else began to walk by and say, I want to get in on this conversation before as long they were having church right there in the grocery store. You know why? Because no, neither of these three people were willing to socially distance themselves from Christ. They're not ashamed of Him. They're not ashamed of what He's done in their life. And I say to you tonight, we need to make sure that we are following closely with Him. We need to make sure that we are following closely to the Savior and not following at a distance. And I hope these feeble words will help you tonight. So, Father, we come in Jesus' name. I ask you right now that you will just take these feeble words and use them for your glory. Use them for your honor. I pray that it will help somebody out there tonight that may not have been serious with God, may not have been serious with you, may not have been following Jesus like they should. I pray, God, that you'll help them to get serious and to stick close with Jesus. And God, I pray for that one that may be discouraged, may be down and out because they found themselves where Peter did. Uh, after that rooster crowed and after uh, he realized that he had denied him and after he realized that he had forsaken him, Lord, they found this, maybe they found themselves disappointed and discouraged, maybe distressed, maybe beating themselves up. I pray that you'll let them know that you're willing to start over with them every single day. I pray that you'll just raise them up and help them to have a great comeback in the days ahead. Let them know, God, somehow that you've forgiven them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.